I'm the president of the Association of Translators, Mission Translators. Yes. That's one, uh, well, having retired from my teaching job, that's almost my mm -hmm. other involvement. Mm -hmm. But we, the whole, the, fam the family owns a publishing house. And so I'm always busy with the publishing house, okay. the publishing uh, books, children's books, religious books, and uh, my interest would be either uh, post on the trade books that can be translated into Malay. Mm -hmm. We do not have enough writers uh, to write knowledge books. Okay. So we depend quite a lot on the, uh, these trade books that are published in Europe, in America, right. and we got them published here in Malay. Okay. Do you have any idea what percentage of books would be translations? If I go into a bookshop in, 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 uh, in Malaysia or in your catalogue? Not much, not as much as they do in Indonesia. Okay. The reading public is a lot larger in Indonesia mm -hmm. and they do translation a lot faster. Uh, oh really? Yes, very okay. much faster. Does that mean not as well? Um, well we we Get used to say that it could be better, but I think they have improved over okay. time. Okay. And they both translate in terms of speed and number okay. in large quantity. So we're not as good as that. These are countries where translation is needed for school textbooks and things like uh, that. Or, or part of it, it yeah. part of it. But textbooks normally we don't translate. We have our own textbooks. Okay, good. Uh, in subjects that we teach in both languages, English and Malay, of course, that, that would need to be translated. Mm -hmm. But the, that, that does not bother us too much. Mm -hmm. The government the department will do that job. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't pass it on to us. Okay. okay. A translation is needed to support the position of the Malayan language? Um, we, I seldom think about it, but because the, the Malay language has been existing for about 2,000 years, mm -hmm. and whether we believe it or not, it has its own literature, writing system, mm -hmm. and uh, long before Shakespeare wrote his uh, uh, poetry mm -hmm. and plays, and you know, we already had books right. written in Malay. Right. So it has been there a long time. Right. So it, 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 but a lot more concentrated on the religion. No doubt those those days, during the early days, must be on Hindu religious book, Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. days. but with the coming of Islam, uh, uh, it, is, it has shifted over to the Arabic script. Yes. Yeah, so that, that, that's probably how I would uh, like to see my language. It's an old language, mm. and it has, has its own tradition, right. and it's still existing. Good, excellent. Translations from Malay into other languages. Uh, do people here do that? Are they interested in that? They. I wish we could, but then they're not much. But we have some, some kind of uh, poet uh, laureate award. Uh, they produce novels and all this, and those part of it has been translated into other languages. Mm -hmm. One of it, the the Kion Seng, it's been translated into as many as 29 other languages, okay. Russian, and, uh, all the European languages, okay. and all other languages, uh, Arabic and all. So it, it, it is sizable in that sense. And lately, Japanese and Chinese uh, also interest, Korean. So okay. we, we got some translation into those. Languages. And these are translations done in the countries? Uh, done in the country, yeah. but okay. not as much as uh, we can claim, sort of, we can go, go on and be very proud about it. Okay. A uh, lot more has to be done. Okay. There's another question. <coughs> when people translate here, is translation the same as if we translate between French and English? I mean, are the concepts of translation the same? I wonder, because um, we, we seldom give any thought to that kind of uh, translation. What is, 
uh, the product line. But we translate, we do. And mm -hmm. uh, there seldom is any kind of review after that. So okay. I wouldn't be able to say anything sensible on it. Okay. Uh, I I have been trying to teach my friends how to do book reviews and, and all those things, but we have done very little such okay. exercises to be able to say that no, we are doing it just like the uh, European manuals and all whatever it is, or more okay. like the Norwegian literature. Agency, no, Would a translator not. strive for equivalence? And translating. Mm. Okay. We, uh, I suppose we do get okay. something, but I've seen a trans, uh, a two translation in the same book, mm. and I thought one read a lot better than the other. So mm. uh, this, uh, this um, book, uh, a rope of ash or something, you know, something I forgot the the title correctly, but. One tra translation read much better, and I thought it was better rendered in English yeah. than the other one. There's a lot of variation within yes, the factor. It, it does. Yes, I think. I'd like to go back to when you were in your mid-20s, uh -huh. or 23, 24, 25, whatever. Yeah. What were you doing then? I was still doing my graduate studies, you know, because uh, after, I'm one of those people who continued my studies uh, non-stop, mm -hmm. you know, from my First degree, second degree, and up to my PhD. Okay. So, so I, what area were you working I, in? I was in Kuala Lumpur doing my master's. And my PhD was in Scotland. Ah, okay. Uh, so, it just happened, and I could, I could remember very well now that during those two years of uh, doing master's degree, one of our main concerns is that there, there is such a thing as the country is trying to uh translate as many books and books of knowledge into Malay. But from our side it was more like where do I get my next uh you know uh next pocket money for yes, okay. our scooters and our <laughs> motorbikes. Okay. So I was actually uh I benefited from Sultan Takdir Ali Shabana who taught us, you know, in the second year one whole year of course on translation mm -hmm. and that was actually my I was busy with uh, the Kuala Lumpur uh, Dewan Bahasa how do you have any books to be translated uh -huh. very often they have so you were translating uh, well, as, as, as uh, early as uh, 1968 um, 67 okay I was already doing it for my, my first book. For oh, your scooter? Uh, <laughs> uh, I was translating the uh, Patterns of Culture by Ruth Baradi. Okay. Uh, I was already translating that. And of course, the fee was chicken feed at that time. It was only 2,000 ringgit, but okay. there was a lot of money okay. there. So after finishing that, I got another job, another job. But I, I was a lot more involved with translation of books okay. at that time. So you were a practitioner uh, as yes, well I as did. an academic? Yes. Okay. I, I suppose that was one of those things that kept me going in translation. Good. And even as late as a few years back, I was still translating a book for the Ministry of uh, uh, Rural Affairs. You know, yeah. and I was enjoying myself reading how did Malaysia develop the rural uh, areas, the villages, into what we call uh, Felda or something, or the Federation Land Authorities or something like mm -hmm. that. And I was sort of uh, discussing with some officers there, you know, that I met from time to time. You know, there, there are a lot of countries in Africa that could benefit from the, our theory, okay. or, you know, how, how do we okay. develop our uh, palm oil and that kind of thing for the rural areas. And that, that, that was all in that book that I translated. You said you did your PhD in Scotland. Uh, I was in Edinburgh. Yes. Yeah, that, that was. What was that on? On general linguistics, the theoretical linguistics. And okay. My uh, professor and my 
supervisor was Professor John Lyons. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. There, there, there were other uh, scholars, you know, like yeah. the fanatic guy, Professor Albert Bondi, you know, there were yeah. quite a lot. But this was semantics then? Uh, semantics, semantics. Okay. Yeah. Lyons was semantics. Yes. So I, I had that advantage yeah. of um, being taught by some well known professors. Then you came back to I Malaysia? I came back to Penang. To Penang. Penang, okay. Yeah, I was hired when I was in overseas. Okay. The, the, those were the early days when I could have been within the first half, uh, two dozens of Malaysian with PhDs. Really? So, okay. in 1972. So, uh, you were really setting in uh, motion? Yes. Uh, so, academic. I started the language center in Penang. Right. And then I move on to humanities, and then, so I was uh, well top of the queue mm. for Very good. a lot of stuff. Yeah. But Tell me, has because I'm focusing on translation. Has that become more important in recent years in the university system, or has the, it always been there? The translation. Yes, the training of translators, the study of translation. It, it has always been. I suppose that was put into my head by Sultan Takbir Ali Shabana who is a professor from Indonesia, very well known. Mm -hmm. he, he, he himself uh, spoke uh, eight languages. Uh, now he has always been talking to us about translation. You've got to bring in knowledge into your mm -hmm. language and that kind of thing. That, I suppose, remain in my mind, you know, that whether I like it or not, until now, that's almost some 50 years later, I'm still thinking about you know, whenever we run out, so there's no one to write this stuff to. Mm -hmm. So we have to go to just pick up any book in English and get it translated. Uh, Is this part of development for yeah. a language or for a culture um, or a society? I kept on believing, or rather, kept on remembering that. There was a sentence that I read about development of nations and countries. And any country that develops is always preceded by a flurry of translation activities. And be it Japan, China, mm -hmm. Italy, and Korea. And of course, nobody remembers about Britain and France and uh, Germany. And looking back into the history of these people, of education in these European countries, that is exactly, that was what yes. happened. Yes. They, yes. they translated a lot of stuff mm. and after that they indigenous, uh, indigenous the knowledge and then they become, uh, they created uh, and generate more mm. knowledge based on what they have translated. Just uh, in parentheses, mm. You're citing an Indonesian scholar, mm -hmm. and I've met Indonesians here at this conference uh -huh. in Kuala Lumpur. Is there a rivalry between the two languages, which are very similar in the two cultures, or is it cooperation? I, we have this uh, Malay, Indonesian, and uh, Brunei Malay Language Council mm -hmm. that started way back in 1972. And I was okay. among the earliest to be in that committee, mm -hmm. uh, having gotten my PhD in 1972. When I came back, I was roped into this committee mm -hmm. together with Asma Yoma, who got her PhD just about one year earlier. And I, I was, so I was involved in this language uh, standardization activities, okay. spelling, pronunciation, for the and three areas, the three yeah, countries. terminology, okay. and Singapore comes in as an observer, uh -huh. but they do actually accept and implement whatever we do, mm -hmm. but they don't want to be a full member. Okay, but, so it does not really matter, but we, 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 they they are part of it too. So, uh, so are the varieties then converging uh, or diverging? Do you think? It's uh, finally. We were hoping that there's a lot of convergence, mm. but I must 
I must say that I'm also surprised that the two languages do not develop the sort of uh, the way we thought it would. Okay. Uh, we can't say that here we control the language, but in Indonesia the, the Pusat Bahasa does not. Mm. But I think that's probably more healthy than what is developing here. I'm annoyed. Oh, by really? Some, yeah, by some of my friends. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is wrong, that's wrong, the student is wrong here, yeah, just because they want Bahasa say one way. Mm. Uh, the Indonesian don't care about that and they are progressing very fast. Is that like French? French is very controlled, English is very uncontrolled. Is that Probably. Similar? I know, I know. You, you, you do not sort of uh, make people pay fine for wrong spelling. <laughs> Ah, you're fine for wrong spelling. Ah, okay, they, that's, they are that's hoping serious. we can do that here. Oh, really? we, we don't. We don't do that. Okay. So actually, whether we like it or not, the Indonesian language is developing a lot faster. It's a much bigger country, though. Bigger so, speakers, yeah. bigger readers, and they are not so they are not so obsessed with the English language. Ah, uh, okay. So they continue. You know, in, in fact, their bookshops are. It's an envious thing, you know, to go into their bookshop and see how many books of knowledge they have. Yes. And uh, it's a lot more than here. So they translate more? Yes, yes. they do, yeah. and fast. Okay. Here we have, but not as many. Our bookshops are quite well provided, but I think a lot more in English, which somehow people believe that English would actually uh, bring in knowledge and make you become modernized but i'm one of those people who don't believe so because not everybody read in english okay. they don't yeah. they don't but the bookshops are kept alive by, by the small number of english readers you know, they, okay. they, they won't go out of fashion okay. they will not i don't see how kinokunya will close uh, borders does borders close now but i think that's yeah. due to digital and yes. other things Kinokunya is doing very well. Okay. Yeah. If you were starting your career and doing research on translation, uh -huh. what kinds of <coughs> things, what kinds of problems would you like to see people working on? Um, well, talking on hindsight, I suppose, what, what we need more is it were probably something that uh, Sultan Tadi Tadi Rali Shabana that left uh, uh, with me was that it it is uh, it is giving everybody that skill to read and understand and translate uh, rather than uh, well translating a book is one thing but getting a, as many translators trained as possible, mm -hmm. that would be uh, something that we, I would consider. You know? Okay, so the so training, training is an area. Of probably the making half of the students in the university, whether they like it or not, why, ah. why don't you try? The, in all disciplines? Uh, yeah. In all disciplines, and okay. make it optional. Do not That's interesting. Them. So we train engineers to translate, yes. and yes. doctors to translate. So if they need to, they'll do it. Yes, okay? yes. I mean, that, that's about it. And then training translators, it's not translation per se. In a way, it's training people how to read, how to understand, how to sort of review a book. So you are teaching a lot of skills yes, yes, in, yes. Uh, in, in that little uh, course called translation. 